you preach some by what you say, more by what you do, most by your life, your life. And that's what I appreciate about Brother Rice. His life speaks that song, doesn't it? The joy, so much he could be bitter about, complain about, on and on. And other people like that in this room, Mrs. Hyde and others. Yet a sweet spirit, a joy. It just helps us know it's a choice, isn't it? Amen. To have joy, to have love, to have uh, the joy of the Lord on your countenance, your life. It's not anything to do with your circumstance or how you feel. Uh, those type of people prove that, don't they? It's a choice. And I appreciate his life there behind the song and testimony. And I praise the Lord for the rices. Well, uh, we have, of course, testimony. We'll call some from the floor in just a minute at testimony time. We'll have one other later in the service. But uh, one thing we've been emphasizing, of course, this is the Lord's emphasis, is that as we go, the Bible says we're to be a witness. It's not just you put your soul winning hat on at soul winning time or visiting time. It's all the time. 
always. We're to be at it as Christians. We're ambassadors. We have a ministry of reconciliation. That's not a spiritual gift. That's the ministry for all the church, everybody that were involved in this ministry. And so it's thrilling to no end to hear when God's people are doing just that all the time at it. And so I've asked Miss Corley if she'll come. And uh, where are you at? There you are. I'm going to let you start. And, uh, and then I'm going to, would you come up here? Do you mind coming? I'm going to let Miss Jenny, if you want to maybe get ready and we'll have you come next. And uh, both of them have a testimony of what the Lord's used in their life and excited about what God's done. And actually, Corley has two to share. I'll ask her to share both of them. And I'll go ahead and come on, and then I'll let Miss Jenny follow that. Appreciate you. Thank you. Well, I've been coming to this church for a little bit over a year and a half. And since I've been here, God has allowed me to do some great things like um, Fisherman's Club. Amen. And visitation. Um, Fisherman's Club has really helped me because during school I can be a witness and Amen. show people and tell people about Christ. And Amen. I have led two of my friends, Mallory Cato and Mallory Janola's. Um, I led Mallory Janola's um, to the Lord Amen. when Amen. she came over to my house for a sleepover. Amen. And um, it was really great because she was really interested in it. And um, she um, is Greek, so she believes in the Greek gods. So um, she was really confused about only one god, but I talked to her more about it, and she was really interested in getting baptized, so just pray that she can Amen. get baptized soon. And uh, Mallory Cato, it was on Monday night visitation, and... It was really nice to see that because she's not the best influence and she's not the best at school, but um, she is nice and it was nice to see that and she's changed a lot since Amen. then. Amen. Yes. Um, and it's really nice because they come to me all the time and ask me about stuff like that just in the middle of the nowhere and it's nice to know that they can come to me and ask me questions about that. And um, I also led one of the water boys on the football team to the Lord. Amen. He was talking about Satanism and how we should uh, not follow Christ and to do it this way and to do this way because God says it's not right. Um, but I was talking to him and I had my little New Testament in my book bag. Yeah, and um, I showed him and then he received Christ and yeah. ever since then I haven't heard him talking about Satanism or Amen. Uh, Amen. things like that so it was really nice. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Isn't that thrilling? And I appreciate Corley. She is willing wherever, no matter who's around, to, she's outspoken for the Lord. And that's thrilling. And that's school and people talking about stuff. Many people might be intimidated to say something or, you know, we say, well, we don't want to offend them. Really, we don't want to be offended. We don't want to be embarrassed. But you speak up. It's amazing the power of the gospel. The Bible says this book is a hammer. And it breaks the heart of stone. And God's word cuts through the hard heart and cuts to the, all the way the Bible says, into the heart, the heart of the matter. And, and uh, isn't that thrilling? Just as she's going. Now, one time I was on visitation, hallelujah, but late at night, having a sleepover, I think it was like two in the morning or something. Here they are. And she begins speaking to her friend about Jesus. <laughs> isn't that thrilling? And that, may God use all of us like that. You, you could be on a plane, you could be at your work, you could be, I mean, anywhere. And looking and open and, and praying and seeking someone that you can uh, share the gospel with and get that message of Christ to people. Well, here's another one. Here's Jenny in her home, someone coming, and I'll let her share what God did. Thank you, Jenny. About a year ago, I found a lady on Facebook who was advertising that she cleans houses and she was running some special. And so I was looking for somebody to come every once in a while to help me clean mine. And so I contacted her. And she started coming. Um, we kind of hit it off. She's uh, in her early to mid-20s. She's young. She's got four boys. Um, not a very good home life. Um, she wasn't the, um, the best house cleaner I've ever had. <laughs> but I had her keep coming back because I really felt like God had put her in my life for a reason. Amen. And I wanted, to, I wanted to, every time she came over, she would talk about her family, she would talk about her husband, different problems that she was having. And I would try to um, 
just tell her about things that I did in my marriage and, and things that the Lord had showed me over the years. And so as time went on, um, I talked to her about uh, if she went to church and um, things of that nature. And um, I asked her if, uh, if she had ever, if, if she knew for sure if she died right now, she'd go to heaven. And so the first time I asked her that, she said no, that she didn't know for sure. And even though it had been a year that we had known each other, all the times I tried to bring this up with her and tried to have these kind of conversations with her, I just felt like we were being shut down. I mean, just every time we tried, started talking about it, something would come up, the subject would change, there would be kids, or there, it was always something. I never felt like the Lord was really leading me into that. But I, but I couldn't get rid of the feeling that God had her in my life for Amen. a purpose. Yes. And one of the things that really proved that was not long after she started cleaning for me, she came and, and one of the first conversations I had with her about um, church and where I started telling her where I went to church and everything, and she said, she said, Gospel light? And I said, yeah. And she said, she said, well, I cleaned for a lady the other day, and I think that that's the, pa the preacher's wife. And I said, what? <laughs> so sure enough, I called Mary, and I said, hey, did my clean lady come to your house? <laughs> and she said, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, it was God. I was like, well, first she's coming to my house, and now she's going to the preacher's house, you know. And so I was able to talk her into coming to visit, and her and her family came, and yeah. um, they, they just came the one time, and the husband didn't seem real receptive, and and then some things happened in her in her personal life, and she contacted me and said, um, "There's been some bad things going on." She she told me what it was, but I don't need to go into that. But she said, "I've lost my car, I've lost my house, I've had to move, um, so it's gonna, you know, I, I just wanted to let you know, you know, I didn't just disappear, or drop off the map. It just I've got some things going on, and my heart just dropped because I thought that's it." The, the door's been closed. I don't know where she's living. She doesn't have a car. She can't come clean for me anymore. I don't, you know, I just, and I was so heartbroken over it. And I said, Lord, I promise if you bring her back, the next time she comes back, I, I promise I will sit her down and I will, I will go through um, the plan of salvation with her and we'll just, we'll just see what happens. And so that was on a Sunday. Well, she called me the next I think Monday it was and said I've got a car when do you want me to come clean I'm ready to work I said Thursday come this Thursday so she came Thursday and one of the things that um, I was a little nervous about was in her um, Facebook post she would say I want to I want to praise the Lord for this let me tell you what my Heavenly Father did he did this for me and he did that for me and I thought here's a person I know is not saved because I've heard her testimony I mean, I'm pretty sure, 90, you know, 98% sure. But she, it, she wants to be. You could tell she wanted that life. She, she wanted those things. Her heart was yearning for that. And so when she came to my house, I said, okay, I know I asked you this once before, but I want to ask you one more time. Do you know for sure? And she said, well, no, I don't really think that you can know for sure. And I said, we can know for sure. Let me show you how. And I, as she was in the middle, she was scrubbing doors. I said, stop what you're doing. Come sit down right here next to me. <laughs> And, and let me put a plug in here for Fisherman's Club because I started Fisherman's Club and unfortunately I had a lot of stuff in my, in my life that interfered with that and I was only go halfway, I was able to do half of it and wasn't able to finish. But I got all the material that everybody gets and that was what I used to help lead this lady to the Amen. Lord. Amen. So don't, don't be afraid of the commitment. It, when Fisherman's Club comes up, do it. I mean, do you know any if you if you can't finish it, don't feel bad about it. You've got the resources, you've got people you can call at the church to help walk you through it. And I was a basket case because <laughs> because I didn't finish the course and I was like, I know this is all out of sequence and I'm not doing this right. But the Lord just he made a path. Amen. And it just it was easy and we just went through the whole thing and um and so, and so I you know I took her hand and I prayed with her and I said I said, um, you know, we've gone over these verses, and, um, and I said, what I didn't want to do, what happened with her was she was in a service, she felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit, she came forward, and someone in the church prayed with her and sent her on her way, and that was it. And so what I didn't want to do was pray for her and put words in her mouth and her say, okay, amen, at the end. 
So I said, you know, this is what we've talked about. I want you in your own words to talk to the Lord and tell Him, you know, these things, you know, that, that we, you know, I went through the stages, you know, we know we're a sinner and that He died for us and went through all that stuff. And she said, do I have to do it now? <laughs> and I said, yes, you have to do it now. And she said, do I have to do it out loud? And I said, yes, you have to do it out loud. And at that point, I thought, I don't want to coerce her. I don't want her to feel like I'm pushing her into this. So I said, now look, if you're not ready for this, tell me you're not ready. If you, I don't want you to feel like I'm pushing you. I don't want you to feel like, you know, I'm making you do this. If you're not ready, and inside I'm going, please be ready, please be ready, please be ready, please be ready. You know, and so, and she said, she said, yes, I just don't know what to say. And at that point I started bawling, and she started bawling. And, um, and so I helped her with the words, and she prayed and accepted Christ. And I said, I said, now tell me. <laughs> When you went to that church service, was that anything like what we just did? And she said, no. <laughs> so I just, I hugged her and I said, I said, Amen. you are now my sister and I love you. And, you know, we're going to have the next thing you need to do is, is baptism. And I explained baptism to her and, and it was, it was such a sweet time with her. And we, we just, it was so wonderful. And, and I guess what really made it special for me was this was someone I knew the Lord brought to me Amen. for this purpose. Yeah. And he was gracious enough that when I drug my feet about it, he gave me another opportunity. Amen. 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 Yeah, praise Amen. the Lord. Well, that's thrilling, isn't it? And uh, that's exactly what it's about, you know. What, what we need is not another soul winning time. What we need is to be soul winning all the time, see. Yeah. And that's what would change America, that we would change our church, change our lives. If we were just everywhere all the time, we were looking and seeking and asking the Lord to give us someone that we can witness to. And what a privilege that is.
Well done. Beautiful. Exodus, if you'll take your Bible, Exodus chapter 17. What a friend our Jesus is. Amen. Appreciate those ladies. Been reading in my personal Bible reading in through the book of Exodus, and uh, what an exciting book it is, the Lord's work and His power and might. But Exodus 17, I want to just share briefly with you a thought, and the title of it is Our Greatest Need. Our Greatest Need. And I want you to look here briefly at Exodus 17, beginning in verse 8. The Bible says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur, that's actually a guy's name, okay. Aaron and Hur, rough stuff, went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, one on the one side and the other on the other side. His hands were steady until the going down of the sun, and Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. I want you to focus in on verse 11. It came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. When he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. I want you to think of our greatest need. You see the power of God in verse 11. God says, take the rod of God and go up on the mountain and hold it up. As you hold it up, I'll give the victory. Makes me think of the power of prayer. You see here, Amalek is a type of the flesh in the Old Testament. You think about, here they are battling. and You and I are battling. The Bible says we're in a battle. We're to put on the weapons and, and the armor of God. And the weapons of our warfare is prayer and the word of God. We're in a battle. And... Every day we have this, well, choice, this decision, this one party's going to win, one party, if you will, is going to be yielded to either the flesh or the spirit. And here he is on the top of the mountain, and I love the picture of him raising his hands, and if you would, raising his hands in prayer, a picture of, of prayer and reaching up as he's seeking the Lord. And as he raised his hands, they had victory. But you'll notice the moment, verse 11, the moment he let down his hands, when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. And this is the challenge from my own heart, was that the moment we stop praying, the moment we get out of communion with our Heavenly Father, as the Bible says we're to be praying without ceasing there in Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. That moment, sin begins to prevail. That moment, our life is not headed the right way. One day without prayer and Bible reading. One day. And things can change so quickly. And here as he has his hands lifted to the Lord, as he's trusting the Lord, as he's believing in faith that God will work, they have victory. But the moment his arms are dropped, we get tired sometimes. We get busy sometimes. We get wore down sometimes. Uh, we have circumstances of life, and the moment we are not active in our walk with God, we're not in communion with Him, the enemy, the flesh, you, me, <laughs> prevails rather than the Spirit. I was reading this week, D.L. Moody wrote this. I quote, I have noticed in traveling up and down the country, and after mingling with a great many ministers, that it is not the man who can preach the best that is the most successful, but the man 
who knows how to get his people together to pray. If the man who is your minister preaches the gospel, you stand by him, pray for him. What a help it is for a man who is preaching to have a lot of people in the pews praying for him. End of quote. This is why we have been emphasizing this year prayer. Because I know I'm not some great preacher. What we need is not a great preacher. What we need is the Lord Jesus. What we need is the power of God, as we talked about this morning. The power of Christ. I need the power of Christ in me. And you do in you. And as we walk with Him, as we have victory, as we stay with arms lifted to Him, humble before Him, we can have victory. I read again this week the story of Charles Spurgeon touring a group of people through the Metropolitan Tabernacle. He's showing these visitors the church and he takes them and shows them the boiler room. And they wonder, why is he showing us the boiler room? Why do I want to see the boiler room? Puzzled a little bit by this famous preacher who showed them this room. And he says, this is the room where a number of faithful members gather to pray as I deliver my messages. He knew where the power was. Spurgeon would say, it's not me that made this church great. It's this church that made me great. They prayed. They sought. They were out in the streets of London, they said, repeating his messages throughout the week as God worked in their life, and they would share that with others. What our church needs is a boiler room, you know. We need to pray. We need to seek God together. And what a privilege it is to do that. I appreciate how many of you are praying. I couldn't help but think how time is short. Even this night, last night, over into today, how ISIS they've talked about is attacked in New Jersey, first in Manhattan and New York, and then uh, also in that mall in Minnesota, all claimed by ISIS, and people are fearing an, some type of an attack even greater scale than that. But I want you to know that any of that ought to drive us back to the Lord. Back, we need Him, because... We know he's coming back. We know our country is in a spiral downward that's not getting better and is going to continue to get worse until we turn back to the Lord. It doesn't matter who gets elected. None of that matter. If it was, if it was the guy you think that would have been the greatest Christian up there, it wouldn't make any difference. Not if the people don't get back to praying, seeking the Lord, saying we want God again in our nation. And may the Lord help us. For many of you that are praying day after day for this church, and I appreciate it. Thank you. We're seeing people saved. We're seeing God use us. And people that are laboring as a church are laboring for souls and seeking the Lord for revival. Our prayer is being answered. The Lord's working. And He wants to work in you and through you and through this church. But may God stir us to prayer. What a vivid picture this is here. As the man of God, the Bible says, you stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in your hand. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And I found my own life when I have my hands held up, when I'm, when I'm seeking the Lord, when I'm walking with Him, we have victory. But when things get busy or we forget, and we get tired, the flesh prevails quickly, quickly. And may the Lord remind us, reliance on God, prayer, the difference and the contrast without it. As the children quoted the scripture for you, those are my mom's life verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Think of that. In all our ways. That means praying without ceasing. That means constant communion with him. That's that walking with the Lord. Walking with him. May the Lord help us. Let's bow in prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed.